There are over 6,000 exoplanets that are currently known to exist, and that number is constantly increasing. However, the vast majority of these planets are pretty far away, usually hundreds or thousands of light years. This can make many planets hard to study, as generally the further away an exoplanet is, the harder it is to see it. Some planets we're seeing as they were thousands of years in the past due to light delay, though despite what some people may think, that's not long enough time for the planets to have significantly changed, so we can be pretty confident that how we see all the exoplanets we know of now is mostly accurate to their present day environments. But anyways, there are 9 other systems within 10 light years of the solar system, which is a range that is theoretically reachable by hypothetical technologies like solar sails within a human lifetime. Of these 10 systems, including the Sun, there's a total of 12 stars, 2 brown dwarfs, 1 rogue planet, and at least 16 no planets, overing some of them, with many additional candidates. So with that in mind, what are the closest exoplanets, and what do we know about them? Keep in mind for this video that this is accurate up to September 2025, and there are almost certainly undiscovered objects in this region of space. Some estimates say there are more rogue planets than stars, and it's entirely on the table and maybe even likely that there are undetected rogue planets closer to us than Alpha Centauri, for example. I'll also be talking about the unconfirmed planet candidates in this region in addition to the confirmed planets, but there are likely planets that have yet to be detected at all, candidate or otherwise. So we'll first quickly talk about the solar system, just for comparison, before getting on to the exoplanets. The solar system hosts one star, the Sun, which is a large G-type. There are at least eight planets here depending on your definition of planet, with four small inner rocky planets, four large outer gas giants, and an assortment of small icy bodies beyond that. Jupiter is currently the second largest planet within 10 light years, only beaten by the rogue planet Y0855-0714, which we'll get to later, but there may be a bigger run around Alpha Centauri A, which we'll also get to in a bit. Mercury is currently the smallest known planet within 10 light years, though there are a handful that get close. Uranus and Neptune are among the coldest, and Earth is one of the only a few in the habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. So far, the solar system planets are the only planets in the universe with confirmed moons, but that's simply because exomoons are very hard to detect, and there are many unconfirmed candidates. The Sun also has the largest number of planets within this region, but again, there may be undetected planets around other stars that may change this. Anyways, let's now go on to Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centaur is the only triple star system within 10 light years of the Sun, hosting a large sun-like star, a smaller orange dwarf, and a very small red dwarf on a distant orbit, Proxima Centauri. Proxima Cent is 12,000 astronomical units away from the main pair, which is comparable to the distance between the Sun and the inner Oort cloud on an eccentric orbit. The star likely gets as close as 4,000 AU to the main pair, and is currently at the furthest point of its orbit, which likely lasts about 550,000 years. Of the three stars, Proxima Sen is the only one with confirmed planets, having two confirmed and one candidate. Proxima Centauri d is the first planet from the star. It's a small hot planet at least 25% the mass of Earth, which is between the masses of Earth and Mars. Because Proxima Centauri is such a small star, Proxima d takes just 5 days to orbit it, and is just 0.028 AU away. While it doesn't have a measured temperature yet, it's estimated to be somewhere around 87 degrees Celsius or 188 Fahrenheit, which is hot but below the boiling point of water. However, Proxima Centauri is an active red dwarf, and, especially when it was younger, releases powerful flares and XUV radiation that is good at stripping away planetary atmospheres. Given Proxima D's small size and close distance from the star, it seems likely, though not yet confirmed, that Proxima D is an airless rock, like a cooler version of Mercury. The same could be said about Proxima b, the second planet in the system, which is similar to Earth in size and in the habitable zone of its star on an 11 day orbit. We have a lot of planets to cover in this video, so unfortunately I don't have time to go in depth about why exactly I think it's extremely likely that Proxima b has little to no atmosphere, and is almost certainly an uninhabitable irradiated desert. But I will say it's close enough to the star to be tidally locked, so we'll have a permanent day and night side, plus the flares I mentioned earlier, and it seems red dwarf planets will form without large amounts of volatile material, like water, and there are some estimates that say, depending on the size of Proxima b's primordial atmosphere, it could have become airless in as little as 10 million years after formation. This is an interesting planet, and the closest Earth-sized planet outside the solar system, but its chances for habitability are, unfortunately, slim at best. I have a few videos about this already, but I'm probably going to remake it sometime soon because there's some interesting stuff I've missed and I want the views. There's a third controversial member of the Proxima Centauri system, Proxima C. If it exists, it will be around 7 Earth masses and similar to the distance Mars orbits the Sun, making it exceptionally cold and dark. This could make it essentially a smaller version of Neptune. 
Unfortunately, evidence for this planet's existence has been inconclusive, with the most recent work on the matter suggesting that the original Proxima C candidate was likely a false positive, but there is weak evidence for a different planet on a similar orbit. However, it's too weak to be considered a full planetary candidate yet, so Proxima C is kind of just a massive grey area right now. Alpha Centauri A and B are a pair of G and K type stars, separated about the distance Saturn orbits the Sun. Unfortunately, this distance is kind of a curse, as these two stars are too close to one another to make planet formation easier around each star, but also too far away from one another to make planets orbiting both stars likely. It seems like a strong possibility that the planets of Alpha Centauri binary may be small, and there may only be a few of them. However, there is one large candidate planet around Alpha Centauri A that is getting more and more likely to actually be real. Currently, it's called Candidate 1, or Alpha Centauri AB. It may have been directly imaged, but there's uncertainty as to whether or not the image taken was of a planet or some other kind of unrelated object, such as a comet with a large tail. If it does exist, based on 2025 James Webb observations, Candidate 1 is similar to Jupiter in radius but around half of Jupiter's mass, and could be on a highly eccentric oval-shaped orbit. If this is true, its orbit takes 2-3 years to complete, and it passes through the habitable zone, making it impossible for Earth-like planets to exist around Alpha Centauri A. However, given that there seems to only be a pretty low chance of it even being possible for gas giants to form in the Alpha Centauri system, given the distances between the stars, Candidate 1 is yet another inconclusive grey area right now. It might exist, but it also might not. Alpha Centauri b, the second star, has one potential planet, which was detected by the Hubble Space Telescope with a potential transit event. If this planet is real, it will be around the size of Earth and very hot, likely with lava oceans and a 20-day orbit around Alpha Centauri b. However, there's been very little information on this potential planet candidate since 2014, so I'm not sure of its validity. Unfortunately, planets are difficult to find in Alpha Centauri, because the two large stars pulling on each other makes detailed observations difficult. That, combined with the fact that any planets in this binary would likely have to be small due to the system's formation history, it makes sense why we know very few Alpha Centauri planets despite this being the closest system to us. Anyways, the next system is Barnard Star, a singular, fast-moving red dwarf. It's just under 6 light-years away and hosts 4 confirmed planets, which is the most of any star within 10 light-years except for the Sun. However, all 4 planets are very similar to one another. In fact, all four planets are very similar to Proxima d as well, each between 0.19 and 0.3 Earth masses at minimum. For comparison, Mars is about 0.15 Earth masses, so these planets are all roughly Mars-sized. They take between 2 and 7 days to orbit Barnard Star, making all four of them pretty hot. It's likely that the entire Barnard Star system consists of small planets like these, as the study that found these four also ruled out anything larger than about half an Earth anywhere closer to the star than the habitable zone. Like the Proxima Centauri planets, I would bet that all four of these are airless Mercury-like planets, especially because Barnard Star is much older than the Sun, which means the planets have had more time to lose their atmospheres. Next up is Lumen 16, the closest brown dwarf to the solar system at 6.5 light-years away. It's a binary pair of 35 and 29 Jupiter-mass brown dwarfs, putting them well above the mass of planets. Interestingly, Lumen 16 is closer to Alpha Centauri than the Sun is, just 3.5 light-years away. So while Alpha Centauri is the closest system to the Sun, the closest system to Alpha Centauri is Lumen 16. So far, the system has been searched for planets, but none have been conclusively found. The Hubble Space Telescope has ruled out the presence of anything larger than Neptune on orbits lasting 1-2 to two years though, so it's likely that any planets in the system would be pretty small. Of course, being brown dwarfs, that then raises the question of if anything orbiting these objects would be considered planets or moons. Personally, I would consider them planets. The two take about 26 years to orbit each other. Next we get to the sub brown dwarf or rogue planet Y0855-0714. It has an estimated mass between 3 and 10 Jupiters, making it the size of a planet in terms of mass. However, given the object's history, it likely formed in a similar way stars do but just failed to get enough mass, leading to it officially being classified as a sub brown dwarf instead of a rogue planet. However, given that it is high planetary mass, calling it a rogue planet wouldn't be entirely inaccurate. This makes it the largest planetary mass object within 10 light years, being about 7.3 light years away from the solar system. It has been directly imaged, because it's young enough and big enough to release its own internal heat. It has a measured temperature of just 53 degrees Fahrenheit or 11.8 Celsius, which would be comfortable if it weren't for the crushing surface gravity it likely has. Wolf 359 is yet another singular red dwarf 7.8 light years away. It currently has no confirmed planets, but it does have one unconfirmed candidate, Wolf 359b. 
If confirmed, it would be an extremely cold gas or ice giant, at least 43 Earth masses, taking just under 11 years to orbit the star at a distance of 1.8 AU, which is interestingly just over the distance Mars orbits the Sun. Which goes to show how small most red dwarfs are, as despite being almost the same distance from its star Mars is, this Wolf 359b candidate would receive less energy from its star than Neptune gets from the Sun. This would essentially make it a much bigger version of the controversial disputed Proxima C candidate. Lalan 21185 is one of my personal favorite systems in this region. It's another red dwarf, but bigger than Wolf 359, and has two confirmed planets and one unconfirmed candidate, 8.3 light years away. The first, Lalan 21185b, is potentially a rocky planet at least 2.7 times the mass of Earth on a 13 day orbit, making it decently hot with a temperature of about 206 degrees Fahrenheit or 96.8 Celsius. Like Proxima D, this is hot but below the boiling point of water. However, given this planet's large size, it may be a possibility for it to have a dense atmosphere, which could greatly increase the temperature depending on the greenhouse effect. The next planet, Lalan 21185d, is unconfirmed and orbits a star at about half the distance Earth orbits the Sun, and is at least 3.8 Earth masses. This puts it far outside the habitable zone and likely makes it extremely cold, despite being closer to its star than Venus is from the Sun. Because of this large distance and larger mass, assuming Lalan 21185d exists, I think it's almost certain that it would have an atmosphere of some kind. Finally, there's Lalan 21185c, at least 13.6 Earth masses and about 2.94 AU away from the star, with an orbital period very similar to Wolf 359b, despite being almost double the distance that planet candidate is from its star, because Lalan 21185 is much larger. This makes this planet definitely an ice or gas giant of some kind, and probably a very cold one as well, making this probably the most Neptune-like planet within 10 light years, except for maybe Uranus. So with two potentially rocky planets that could hypothetically have atmospheres, and an actually confirmed outer gas giant, Lalan 21185 is probably my favorite system within 10 light years other than the solar system. Sirius is the next system sequentially, 8.6 light years away, and also the brightest star in the night sky. Sirius A is also the largest single object within 10 light years, and is in fact also the largest single object within 25 light years until you hit Vega. However, it currently has no confirmed planets, but it does have a white dwarf, Sirius B, in orbit around it, which is a dead star about half the mass of the Sun and the closest white dwarf to us. The next system is Gliese 65, or Loyton 726-8, a red dwarf binary 8.8 light years away, with, like Wolf 359, one candidate planet. This candidate is similar to the Wolf 3591 as well, about 40 Earth masses, though much closer to its star, about 0.3 AU away on a 156 day orbit. Its orbit also might be mildly eccentric if it exists. But interestingly, we actually don't know what star this candidate planet orbits, we just know that there's a planet signal somewhere in the system, but it could be coming from either star. And the planet has different parameters depending on which star. Assuming it orbits Gliese 65a, it's around 39 Earth masses, 0.28 AU away, with an eccentricity of 0.33. But if it orbits Gliese 65b, it's around 36 Earth masses, 0.27 AU away, with an eccentricity of 0.27. This plan's going to be pretty much the same no matter what star it's around, assuming it exists. The ninth and final known system within 10 light years of the Sun is Ross 154, a young singular red dwarf that has no candidate or confirmed planets yet but some evidence that it has a debris disk around it. So with that, those are all the currently known systems and planets within 10 light years of us. You should see a few common trends here. A lot of red dwarfs, a lot of small airless rocks and distant ice giants, with only Lalan 21185 really having anything in between, at least from what we know so far. All these systems are very different from ours, mainly because the stars are smaller, giving them less material to work with, and the few stars that are similar to the Sun in size coincidentally happen to have binaries that mess with planet formation. Which is why I do think the solar system is definitely the most interesting system in this entire region, because even though we don't know much, it definitely looks like there isn't anything like it nearby. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is still very much an incomplete list, and I hope we find out more about this region of space soon, because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. While the planets here may not be the most interesting, at least compared to some other exoplanets we've found, there's something special about all of them simply because they're the closest to us. This video was meant as sort of an overview of everything in our nearby region of space, and I think it would be fun to go more in depth about each of these systems at some point, so tell me in the comments if you want to see that. Yet another video about the habitability of Proxima b will also probably be in the works soon, 
because despite the fact that I have two of them already, there's still way more interesting stuff to say. Which I guess is true of most things when it comes to exoplanets. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.